We actually got this recipe from my mother-in-law, although she kind of eyeballs everything. I like to have like exact measurements. Hey there, welcome back to Lima Bean Living. If you are new here, my name is Emily. Welcome to my family channel. If you are not new, sorry you have to hear that all the time. In today's video, I am going to be doing a kind of get it all done. I actually filmed one yesterday where I repurposed old wax from candles and made some new candles. I also made homemade sugar wax for waxing parts of your body. And I also meal prepped so that I'm not super stressed every day figuring out what I'm going to eat. But in today's video, I am going to be actually making homemade tortillas. Juan and I are going to be reorganizing Aubrey's play area and just kind of cleaning it up because it's gotten a little dirty. And I'm going to be making a fun little craft using Dollar Tree products. And I hope that you guys enjoy. So let's get to it. Today we're gonna to be making 40, about 40, homemade flour tortillas. So to do this, I'm going to need 32 ounces of flour, four ounces of oil, one teaspoon of salt, and we're gonna do two and a quarter cups of water. Everything is gonna be poured into this bowl and measured out in this bowl first, and then we're just gonna let the bread hook go ahead and do its thing until we have a nice soft dough. Now, I actually anticipate that this little recipe here will make about 40 tortillas, which is probably too much for me to have like cooked all at once. So I'm actually going to try to store probably half the dough in like a little ball and wrap it in saran wrap and leave it in the fridge. And then once I get close to using up the rest of the cooked tortillas, I will go ahead and cook some more. We have our two pounds or 32 ounces of flour. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and add in four ounces of oil and our two and a quarter cups of water. So I actually made this same recipe not with the exact measurements. Again, at my in-laws, we kind of like eyeballed it, but we actually mixed the flour and oil and water mixture by hand until we got the right consistency. If we noticed it was a little too wet, we added some more flour. If it was a little too dry, we added some more water. But I've done this by hand, but after using the bread hook the last time, I'm never going back, especially since I have this resource and this tool, I like using it because I can go ahead and focus on something else while the mixer does all of the work for me. Lastly, we're gonna add in just a teaspoon of salt and this is ready to be mixed. Now that the dough has been nicely mixed, it is not super dry and that is okay because I'm going to be sprinkling some flour on my countertop and making little balls of the dough and then sprinkling it on top of the dough as well and rolling it out. So I don't want it to be too dry already because I'm gonna be adding slightly more flour before they get cooked. But in an effort to continue counting my calories and know how much each tortilla is worth in calories. I'm first going to weigh the dough, see how many grams I'm dealing with, and then see how many grams make one tortilla that I like the size of and kind of go from there. We actually got this recipe from my mother-in-law, although she kind of eyeballs everything. I like to have like exact measurements. So I did a little test run the other day and I liked the consistency. So I just wanna say thank you to my mother-in-law, so Ma, Gracias por la receta y te quiero ma. So the tortillas have been cooked, at least half the batch. The other batch I put in some saran wrap and then put in another container and put it in the fridge. I am assuming that it will be fine until I need to cook it again. So I will make sure and update you if it's not, but if you don't see an update, assume that everything worked out okay. We also cleaned the game room and Aubrey was really cute. As we were kind of organizing and cleaning everything, we brought all of our toys and stuff out in the kitchen and she was just sitting on the little beanbag chair just kind of waiting for the vacuuming to be done. So I just thought that was really cute and I thought you guys had to see her. But right now, Aubrey and Juan are outside playing and I'm gonna go ahead and do that craft that I told you about. And if you watched my previous Get It All Done video, you saw kind of my sketch and I'll insert another little clip here of what I'm hoping it will look like and you guys will actually see the process of me actually making it. I'm sitting at my little craft table now and I just kind of want to walk through what I'm planning on doing, but as I'm describing this, you're going to actually see the craft being taken care of. I bought one of these little 
bunny containers from the Dollar Tree. So this was a buck and I am actually going to be just using half of this little bunny and I'm going to be wrapping it with some of this jute twine that I got from the Dollar Tree. It comes in a three pack and I haven't even used up one of these things yet, but I'm gonna wrap this around and my plan is for it to be really rustic looking, maybe it falls under the farmhouse decor look, I'm not quite sure. To make sure that the twine is secure, I plan on tying it in the back where no one's gonna see it and also possibly using some hot glue in the process. After the little half bunny is fully wrapped in twine, I am going to be using this scrap piece of foam board that I have used multiple times in previous crafts, one in a previous video and another part of it in a future video. So stay tuned for that video. But I'm gonna to try to make this look like we have some wooden panels going down the front. And the way that I plan on doing that is kind of outlining with a Sharpie the wooden panels like edges, but then using a dry brush and some black paint that I got from the Dollar Tree and kind of giving it that wooden look. I'm hoping that it turns out okay, but even if it's not, I've probably spent a total of like two bucks on this craft, so it's not that big of a deal if this craft doesn't turn out how I like. But after the poster board is decorated and dried, I'm going to go ahead and glue on the bunny and secure it in the center of the board. And I'm gonna finish off the top and bottom using some nautical rope that I've used plenty of times in previous crafts and future crafts. And the last little special touch on this DIY that I plan on doing is attaching some of the roses that we used at our wedding reception at the top. Now, these roses are in plenty of my decorations. They're in future crafts and previous crafts. You're gonna see them a lot because we have a lot left over, but I think that they will add a special touch to this little craft. They'll easily be removed if I don't like this craft or want to take it apart and use it for something else and I'm just really excited to see how this final product turns out. So my craft is finally done. I am excited to show you guys the absolute final product, but first I gotta give you guys a little bit of a rundown of how things didn't go according to plan. So. First of all, I needed to make sure to add like duct tape or whatever to my little plastic bunny so that the hot glue would actually stick to the bunny. When you use hot glue just on plastic, it's not really going to be as secure as you would hope. It actually kind of breaks off pretty easily or melts the plastic. So using some type of duct tape helps the hot glue stick to the plastic. And so that was one thing that I wanted to make sure to add and mention to you guys. When I painted the board, I didn't just use black paint. I also mixed in a little bit of white and made it more of a dark gray paint. And I really like how this turned out. I'm really pleased with my board. And I calculated based on the amount of supplies that I actually used to make this project. And I wanna say it comes out to about two bucks. And I, <laughs> I don't think anyone can beat two bucks for this type of craft. I'm super pleased with how it turned out. The other thing that really didn't go to plan was I kind of ran out of twine as I was getting towards the end of wrapping my bunny. And so to deal with that little issue, I actually cut little pieces of the twine off the backing from when I wrapped the twine all the way around and I used those little scraps to kind of fill in the little empty space towards the bottom of my bunny and it, it looks just fine. I do think that a full pack of the three little jute twines will do, although it's always better to have a little bit more rather than too little. I also am missing like one last strand of my nautical rope at the top of my final product. So if I end up going to the store when we can go to the stores again, and get some more nautical rope. I'm definitely gonna add just one more string at the top. I think it would make it more symmetrical and more balanced in my opinion. So that's something that I'm also going to add. One other thing that I actually added to my final product was a little bow using some fabric that I had on hand. I decided to do a bow instead of like a little bunny cotton tail. Although I made sure to, that the bow was tied on and not hot glued. So if I wanted to take it off and change it up, 
it would be easy and I wouldn't have to worry about messing up the actual bunny. And on the back, I actually just taped on a little pipe cleaner and that helps it hang wherever I need it to. This craft will be perfect for a nice thin space of wall that you want to add some decoration. And that's it. Thank you so much again for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't enjoy this video, give it a thumbs up anyways, and we'll catch you in the next one. made it to the end of the video. If you didn't know already, my name is Emily from Lima Bean Living. Welcome. We are so happy to have you. We post videos every Monday and Friday on a variety of content, lifestyle, cooking, cleaning, military life, DIYs, encouraging mathematical development in children, and so much more. Thank you so much again for watching and until next time.